Hello, I'm Betsy Warner, and um, I'm here today with my partner, Jessica Turkington. We're talking to Mr. James Purnell Hammond. It is November 5th, 2009. Thank you, Mr. Hammond, for being with us today and sharing your memories. You're quite welcome. Well, we would like to start off. Um, we know that you were one of the first students to help desegregate uh, the Carroll County Schools, and we would just like to know how did it happen that you helped to desegregate? Uh, my father was... Um started the chapter, Carroll County chapter in NAACP around 53, 1953, and, and Eisenhower versus uh, Brown versus Board of Education in 1954. So that was the start of it. And uh, the spring of, uh, the fall of 55, uh, we went to the desegregated school in uh, Union Bridge, Elmer A. Wolf. It was two schools, New Windsor and Elmer Wolf, were desegregated at the same time, 55 of September. Yes, that was it. Okay. Um, we know, as you said, your dad was very active in the civil rights movement, um, founding Carroll County's first chapter of the NAACP in 1953. And uh, we know that you were able to travel with him to Baltimore sometimes when he was setting that up. Do you want to talk any more about that? Well, when I was a kid, I, I didn't think my father could drive so good. So <laughs> I, I was 10, 11 years old, and I, I'd always ride along. I think the family felt better if I went along because I was kind of his eyes. And we'd go to um, Sharp Street's churches where in Baltimore is where they used to have all the meetings and the NAACP it's where they would always carry on their business and uh, I would go with him and a lot of influential people that I say now they're influential black folk that were high high up in the NAACP um, there was uh, Mr. Allen uh, the Mitchells uh, Marshall, the airport's named after him, he'd be there, and Martin Luther King was there one time also. And uh, the matriarch of the uh, NAACP was Miss Lily Jackson, and I, I met her. So it, it, was, it was something for me to gather in at that time. It didn't mean a whole lot to me at that time. But uh, yeah, I met several, several of the civil rights leaders down there. Yeah. That's really exciting. Yeah. Um, how did you feel about desegregating? What was the community like? What was it like going to a new school? Well, to actually start off, we had a, a, a desegregated little baseball team. It was called the New Windsor Cubs. And, and uh, I, I knew a lot of people from New Windsor, and we'd play ball at the little farmer's ground in Union Bridge. So I knew a lot of the people in the neighborhoods. And uh, like I say, they only like the towns are five miles apart. But to leave the all-black school and go to a white school, it wasn't good. To me, that's the way I felt. Yeah, that's, that's the way I felt about it. But um, I had friends at the white school, too, before I went. But uh, I still, I, my preference was Moton. Yeah, because I went there for six years. The first to the sixth, yeah. Yeah. Um, what about the surrounding community outside of the school? Any of the parents or teachers, how did they react to it? Well, the first day was real good. But after the children went home and told them there was black children in the school, it wasn't as pretty as it was the first day, believe me. And uh, they had meetings and things about the desegregation of Carroll County Schools, and it wasn't pretty. It was some heckling and name-calling and things of that nature. but. Uh, we got over it. Uh, we, you know, we got along and we made it. And and it, 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 New Windsor had a little more trouble than what Union Bridge did because the blacks that went to New Windsor they ended up going back to Robert Moton. But uh, we stuck it out up on our end at Union Bridge, Elmer A. Wolf School. Yeah. When we spoke with you on the phone, um, you talked to us a little about your idea of desegregation versus integration. Uh, yeah, well, the reason why I use desegregation is that's something done by law. Integration, you just do it. You know, it's a natural thing. It just comes to you natural. And uh, as, as you all see now, 
that since we have a, a president of color, it's starting to rear its ugly head again. It, uh, these people don't go along with this man, and this man is trying very hard to bring this country back up on its feet. But it's a rough, he's got a rough road to hoe, I tell you, all because of his collar. Yes, that's the way I feel about it. Yeah. Uh, so, of the community today, uh, do you think it is better, worse, the same? The community itself? Yes, sir. Where I went to school? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I'd say it's a little better, but the it's changed. We we don't the little town thing is gone. We we don't know people on Main Street anymore. We knew everybody on Main Street in both of the towns. Union Bridge is more so than Union Bridge has changed. Uh, Union Bridge more than New Windsor. New Windsor is still some of the older families still in town, but uh, Union Bridge drastically changed as far as people go. But I think it's a better environment far as race relations go, I believe, yeah. So when you were growing up, everyone was very close, a small town, sense of... Yes, community. yes. And um, uh, even back before the desegregation, it was very close. It was very close. Um, but we, the blacks had a baseball team and the whites had a baseball team. and. When the whites would get new uniforms, well, they would hand their old ones down to the blacks. And that's the way they played because a lot of the black guys didn't have good jobs at that time. And so they um, went on and uh, used their uniforms. And, and then in the 50s, they, they desegregated. The, it was called a Penmar League. And they played together in the 50s, the blacks and the white fellows did together. Yeah. And it turned out to be pretty good. They had some real good ball players, both, both sides, too. They were good teams. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious when you say the sense of togetherness. When you were growing up, was it across races or just within, like, the black community was very tight and the white community was very tight? Oh, I, I, it was a cross. It was the oh, white and the okay. blacks got along real good okay. until desegregation. It, it made a little bit of difference because the the older people didn't think that the blacks should go to the same things and do the same things as at the same places. But uh, yeah, they they all stuck together. I mean, like in the even in the uh, uh, bars, uh, the blacks they had a spot in the back and the Whites would be in the front, but yet they'd always come over and talk, and they'd all laugh. Because most of them in the Union Bridge area worked at the same place at the Lehigh Cement Company, so it, it, it was a fairly good relationship. But uh, uh, when my dad passed, it, all those fellows that sort of were upset when it first happened, but they all came. They came to, the, and it was a big, big deal. And uh, he was a mason, and I held the masons off so that all the people could get to view the body. Because uh, they came, so I wanted them to be to view the body. Yeah. People really came together over the passing of your father? Well, sort of, but they, they all come around because, um, you know, sports has a way of bringing people back yeah. together. And uh, we had a kid that lived in Union Bridge. I call him a kid. He's the same age as me, but he was a crack shot. <laughs> His name was Charlie Duffins, and he was our center, and he was good. And I mean, we packed that Francis Scott Key High School with him, and uh, we went to the States two years in a row. Wow. Yeah, the 60 and 61 at Key. That's yeah. really impressive. Yeah. So, and we played the big schools, B and A schools, and beat them too. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, I know you brought some stuff with you today. Would you like to share any of what you have with us? Yes, I would. Okay. You might want to hit the pause button down okay. here. Yes, this this is a picture of the 1954 Cubs that went on to win the championship. And uh, as you well can see that uh, we had a mixed team back in 54 before the desegregation of the Carroll County school system. So this is sort of special too. Okay, and this is the picture 
of the Francis Scott Key Eagles. Uh, I think this is the class of 61, but we had a class of 60. We did both years. We went to the state, University of Maryland, both years. But the guy in this, near the center is Charlie Duffins. That's the guy that went AWOL one day, and we had to go find him and bring him back so we could play North Curl. But uh, this is the good team we had back then. Yes, that's it. So as you said, sports really brought people together across the races. Oh, yes, yes. Because the stadium. key was full all the time, yeah. all standing room only sometimes when he was there. And then we had another guy, guy called um, Herb Weller, was a good guard crack shot. He was, he was excellent. He went two years at uh, Western Maryland McDaniel College after he left Key also. Very, very good ball player. Yes, and that's pretty much on the sports side of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. This this picture is somewhat special. Uh, my father, he he was had a lot of age on him, but he always played ball with the the younger guys because he was born 1900. And uh, this guy with this bat is is the big swinger. That's my dad, mm -hmm. and. Uh, he taught me, he wanted me to be a switch hitter, and I ended up batting left-handed, so I never could hit right-handed, so. And that's how we were a ball family, too. We all played sports quite a bit, and that's the sports side of it, yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Do you want to um, talk more about your family history, your dad? I know your dad's dad. Ooh, I don't know nothing about my dad. Oh, um, um, on Buffalo Brick Road? Oh, that was... Uh, all right, uh, my father, he was born in 1900, and he, he had family relatives, and the man was, he was a slave, and his name was Sebastian Hammond, and they've had articles in the Carroll County Times several times about him. He uh, was a stone cutter, gravestone cutter, and he, he couldn't read or write when he started, but he, if you would put it on paper, he could just carve it so beautiful. His stones are in these graveyards today in this local area, and you'll find that the stone that he picked to, to cut for the headstones, for some reason they weather better than, than most stones in graveyards. So his name was Sebastian Hammond. They called him Boss Hammond, and uh, he went on to, he, he grew tobacco. In fact, near where I live now, just down the road from me, um, he, he burnt lime, he also was a, 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 a shoe fair, and he also was a blacksmith. And, and he, over the years, bought his own freedom from, from the master. And he, was a, he got to be right wealthy, but his wife and children were still slaves. So he went back and worked, and he ended up dying a poor man because he got his family. I, I bought them out of slavery also, so. But he was a, a heck of a man in the neighborhood. Plus, his grave is at the little church along Route 26 at the Frederick Carroll County line between Root Road and Buffalo Road, the church that I go to the, today. And uh, he's, he, everybody talks about Boss Hammond, he was a, great man. And then I had a, a great uncle. My dad's uncle was Noah Hammond. And for some reason, uh, uh, Miss Ashcroft, she did the check checking on him, found out that he was in World War I, but he was listed as a, a white man. And I used to go down and play on his farm, and that was my great uncle, Noah. Yeah, and that's just down the road at Rip and Buffalo. Road too, and so the family is an old family. The Hammond family is an old family, and, uh, and and they lived there in that area. But it was all dirt road, and they got they had land. They had a lot of land, owned a lot of land, and a lot of them went to New York, New Jersey, and one of them I forget which one it was. He went to work for the Rockefellers in New York, and. I don't know how he come to buy it, but that's how he, he, he worked there with the Rockefellers. And, but uh, I guess 
with Boss Hammond or Sebastian Hammond going through what he went through, maybe that's where Dad got his inspiration about freedom or equal equality, so to speak. I guess, I don't know, whatever made him do it, but <laughs> I had to go through it. <laughs> so, as I look at, at my side, uh, you know, a lot of people say, well, what did you do? Well, I have a lot of friends. They went to college. And one guy's a doctor of Clark University, Ed Davis. Another guy, Ron Hollingsworth, I think you read articles about him. He went to Morgan. He was a college man. Uh, Marva Brown, she graduated. She went on to Morgan, and she taught. And, um, and then it comes to me. You know, I'm being the first. So I, I don't really know how to put it, but I guess I was either an instrument or a key to the desegregating the Kerr County Schools, I guess. So I, I feel as though I was the key that unlocked the door of segregation. So that's, that's just about it. That's where I think I came into the play. So that's yes, sir. pretty that much it. Yes, sir. definitely seems that way. <laughs> yes. Um, well, uh, but do, you, do you have anything else that you would like to talk about that maybe we haven't touched on or anything else you want to add? Well, I just hope our country heals mm -hmm. and come together and be able to be men and women sit down at the table and do the best for our country. Not what I think is best for me, but do it for the best of the country. And this would be the strongest and most beautiful country in the world. It's good. It's one of the best, but it could be so much better. That's the way I feel about it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Hammer, for sharing your memories with us today. You're quite welcome. I'm glad to do it. Right. Uh, okay. I would like for you all to take a good look at a handsome <laughs> young men and beautiful young ladies of the class of Francis Scott Key, 1961. And if, as you see, this was a large class for 1961. Um, but this, this is, this was it. We have, we have lost several since 61. I, we may be up around 13 or 14. I'm not for sure, but we have had a a lot of brothers and sisters to go on, but uh, this is the this is the class. When did the school open? 1959, September of 1959. Francis Kai Key opened. And did it open as a desegregated school? No, okay. Francis Kai Key didn't. No, because I tra mm. we transferred over. New okay. Windsor transferred over, and some Tawny Town children came down, and Robert Moton. That's where Ron Hollingsworth, his sister Brenda Hollingsworth, um, Elizabeth Jones, Ed Davis, uh, Janice Davis, and Sandra Brooks, Charlie Duppins, Rose Jones, Carolyn Brown, and Sandra Lee Butler. They were all at, in that first year. Okay. Yeah, and Trudy Notes, I'm sorry. Yes, and Beverly Notes. Right. Okay, Mr. Herman, uh, how did you feel about moving from school to school to school? Well, Robert Moton went there six years, first through the six. Uh, the biggest jump was when I went to Elmer Wolf. That, that was hard because I was the only black in my class, and uh, he didn't have friends there. But I'll say this, and then we went to Key, all my friends in the na neighborhood where I lived, came the key. So it was like a happy family reunion again. And the young guys that I played with, the 54 Cubs, and all those guys were there too at key, because that was the New Windsor area, you see. So it, it was so much better when I left Alma Wolf to go to key. But now, when I look back on it, I think it was a great experience. And, and, and for one thing, I got to meet a lot of people. I know a lot of people, and we all get together and we talk and we laugh and we have a good time. So it, it at the time it wasn't so happy, but it in retrospect it's it was all right. It's a good thing because I know a lot of people and, and we all talk and we get along wonderful, and that's the key. That's the end of what the ending that you want. Mm 
you want to have a good relationship with people. Yeah. And that's it. That's where I think I'm at at this stage in my life. Yeah.